Hello everybody. Today, first episode of True Transformation podcast. And I have fantastic guest with me, Luis Hernandez. What I'm going to say right now about Luis is that he will transition from being high-level athlete to being high-level entrepreneur. So, Luis, to start with, Thank you very much for being in the show. Thank you very much for accepting my invitation. I'm really happy to see you. And I can say again. Uh, Michael, thank you. It's always a pleasure to get to chat with you and to sit here and have fun, really. <laughs> well, that's that's all it is. It's uh, Well, listen, guys, if you are stressed at any point of your life, at some point, it will be like it is now for Luis to talk about this at something that yeah it's it's a good fun to talk about this because it's going to be behind you so well that's that's the fault for for the start of the show but what i'm going to ask now is luis what was it tell us about how far did you get in a professional sport as an athlete and uh, well what happened at the end of your career, how did you transform into business? Mm, that's a wonderful question. But I'll start from the beginning very quickly. Uh, tell you a little bit about my sport background, which was in figure skating. And I dedicated my life to it. Um, by now, it's been about 30 years that I've been in a part of the sport. And in the beginning, um, it just started off with, with a passion for for the sport and for just to for the fun of it really it was all about the fun in the beginning and then you know as I grew older I started to get more serious and realized that I had some ability and that's when I made it a career I decided to make it a career and I dedicated um, every waking moment to to the sport and to refining my skill and to becoming the best that I could and that's that road took me to uh, eventually compete on the world level and obtain six national titles and really um, become one of be amongst the best and compete around the world internationally for over a decade. And it was really everything. My life basically depended on figure skating. It's all that I, I knew and all that I wanted to know. And it was a lifetime dedication. And you know, I even I talk about I joke about like I would go to sleep like in certain positions that for skating so that <laughs> I thought maybe my brain will remember this, you know. And so I talk about that because it was that's how much it was a part of me, that it was every yeah. waking moment obsessed with it. And, you that's know, good. as any as any process, there comes a time when things end. And for me, that time came some years back about I would say now it's been two, it's been like seven years since retirement, I believe. I, I have a hard time with the math on that. But um, yeah, when I retired, I, I was already preparing, you know, like, what's my next step? And I started to feel lost, very lost, actually. Um, but the most uh, logical next step for me was to go into coaching. And so I thought, oh, wow, I, I learned so much. I can give back through coaching. I can um, bring something great to the sport some something to contribute and so i thought that will be my contribution and i thought oh that, like that sounds great you know like how convenient how easy what a what an easy transition and so i did i started coaching and in that process i started to to want uh, better even better i wanted i wanted to give athletes uh more i felt like my coaching was limited in the impact that i could give to to my community of, of figure skating and so that's when i started to really um really question if that was really it for me i i knew there was i had so much more to give that i was limited in giving and that's when i really kind of sat down and you know i was very lucky i have a lot of confidants and friends and people around me that um that have always supported me and have always given me uh, advice from or feedback from the most loving place. And to me, the most loving place is a place of not seeing 
the limitations, not saying like, you can't do that, but saying like, wow, you have a vision. What can you do to, to achieve it? And so I was very lucky to have those people in my life. And I started to, to share with them. Like I saw in sport, I was seeing, um, you know, things happening still that I didn't really, um, that I knew and I know um, are not the most supportive for the athletes or for even coaches or the leaders of sport. And I started to see like where there needed to be change made, but where there were no answers. And so that really started to fuel me to want to give solutions back. And like I said, I started to reach out to people around me um, that that believe in me and believe in, you know, my my that have always believed in my dreams and my sometimes crazy ideas, <laughs> my crazy ideas. And um, that's when it started to I started to realize like, OK, coaching is not the ending point. There's more there's more transformation for me still. And it was kind of like, oh, dang it. <laughs> not again because I had lived it in my skating and I yeah. thought oh I'm done like I can be comfortable now like I I'm done uh transforming I became the butterfly I went to the world championships like I thought I was done right and it, it just it was a whole new birth of something new and it really triggered me to it pushed me to become uh an entrepreneur what I'm doing now like to to build a new way, something that had never been done before for sport. Exactly. Um, and which is the company that um, I founded and it's Lasso Safe. Uh, and we we certify sports centers, uh, make them safer for athletes, uh, sport leaders and coaches and keep them safe from all forms of abuse and also instill wellness um, into the sports community. And so, Anyways, it, it was it was kind of shocking going from like, I thought I was done with the coaching to now I have this idea to make this company. And it's completely something I had never, I had never had experience um, building uh, it's more than just completely different, isn't it? Completely different. Well, and so it was training, so rough. Yeah. Yeah. Teaching what you've learned before. So that's still within the same uh well plays i would say and then suddenly going to the management of it and not yes. just the management of what you know really well but going deeper so that was uh, we can say quantum leap from yeah. one universe to another just keeping yeah. the memory from the previous one and uh, yes. yes, because we do talk about this as well in the, the interview that we have on the other podcast, Mindset of Champions, because uh, that's uh, that's when you told us about where the idea is from and how did it happen uh, that you thought about this in the first place. And that's fantastic, guys. I recommend you to uh, well listen to the previous podcast as well. Look for it and uh, and listen to it because it's uh, worth listening. Uh, but. Tell us now the transformation that you went through. Mm -hmm. That's exactly where I was going. Mindset next. of so it, champion. It sounded yes. Mindset of yeah. achiever. And I I have a chance to talk and work with both groups, and I know that it's the same but completely different. However, it sounds that's exactly the way it is. <laughs> yes, yes, and it's How so funny it because. I just laughed at myself because I, oh, it sounded so easy. Like the, you know, <laughs> when I said it, I went, oh, it's so easy. And it was really, it's been the, I hate to lie. It's been one of the hardest things um, I've ever had to go through. Um, and I still, to this day, I'm still becoming um, more confident, more empowered, more sure of what I'm doing. But it was a nightmare in the beginning. I, I had to face, um, I think I had to face every fear that laid within me. Um, mm. And it, it was on every level. It was on a financial level, on a personal level. I had to face it. I had to face anything that's ever stopped me from going for my dreams. And yeah. those were all just beliefs that I had, that I had acquired through my life. Um, and it started with a simple thing. Like I, I thought, okay, if I'm going to go into this, um, I'm going to need to dedicate my life the way that I did to my skating. 
Hmm. And that meant that I had to leave the comfort of my, I had a full-time coaching career going on business basically. And well, definitely with your achievements, with your skills, with your knowledge uh, in uh, figure skating, well, I believe uh, everyone wanted you. To be honest, yes, I was very lucky. I was very blessed and I still am very thankful for those times. And I, of course, it was such a steady, fun, like nice way to make money. And I, I did love it. I enjoyed it, but I just knew there was more, you know, internally. Mm. And so it gives me like chills to think back on that time. Um, I don't know where that bravery came from, but I, <laughs> it's courage. It's courage. And it, it, I think it comes from a deep appreciation of people. Um, I didn't just come from a place of wanting more for myself. It came from a place of wanting more for everyone and myself. And it, yeah, I left my position. I left what I was doing and, and there were some hard times. There were some very scary times for myself and I had to, I had to face them and I had to face yeah. that a reality, a very true reality, which was that sometimes myself and many people, we make a choice out of um, fear and not passion. So yes. I could have very, in many moments, I could have said, I'm, I need this money. I need to make a living and I'm not going to follow my dreams. I'm going to stay comfortable. Hmm. And that was the first that was the first like comfort layer I had to take off <laughs> and it was terrifying. It was horrible. And the people closest to me thought I was crazy. <laughs> so, um, well, like I said, I do have those. Yes. Yeah, let me, let me just rephrase it. Uh, because, uh, well, I look at everything from the mindset point of view. As well as coach, as a clinical hypnotist, I'm interested in what happens in here. So you basically, from place of comfort, challenge, but comfort, you needed to move to the place that uncovered every dark corner of your mind, yes? Absolutely. And you didn't have a chance to learn it and start like you started with the with figure skating. <laughs> No. Why keep on falling? You needed to be straight away higher up. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's what I wanted to point out in here because for a lot of people, for me it was that way. When I started new business, when I well left uh, well sports environment as well, but uh, I was never professional athlete. I was uh, working in a fitness environment. I would say as a gym fitness instructor. Uh, fitness supervisor and I just left everything moved to London got my coaching qualifications and I I was able to learn everything from the beginning you didn't have mm. this chance did you no I did not I did not and it was uh, like I said it was the most terrifying thing but something inside me it just I had to there was no going back there was no other choice and that's when um people started to come out that that uh, listened to what I had to say, that believed in it. And of course, I have my partner, my teammate, uh, my co-founder, Pam, and her and I together just believed in what we were doing. <laughs> and little by little, we started to, to be supported more and more. And, Fantastic. And really, I think... Um, I think that's really important and something I want to be like really clear about is that uh, at no point in time did I let fear be an option. Like, yes, I was scared, but I would never let it win. Like I, even to this day, I still, I'm still scared. I'm not, I'm acting like there's no fear. There's always new fears, new things arising, new things to discover. But, but the more, oh, I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> So right. Sorry about that. We have you back. We we definitely do. Thank you. Okay. Um the more that I the more that I um that I believe in in what what we do, what who I am, 
what the new in me is, the more that people are eager to to help, to be a part of, and to learn more. Yeah. So I think yes. um, I think that internal work really pays off. <laughs> Definitely, well, and I can see that. And uh, there is uh, one more important thing that I can see within your transformation, because we all go through them. Sometimes smaller, sometimes bigger. You have a child, child being born, and that's huge transformation, especially if it's the first one. Well, you finish one school, go to another school, you changing the jobs, even if you're doing the same things. It's always transformation. Uh, what you did was bigger, but uh, what I can clearly see in here, uh, you just followed uh, your dreams and the highest of the human needs, contribution. Mm. That's, that's what I can see here. Because sometimes we think, oh yeah, I changed something, I started this business. Uh, just today... Uh, I was listening to to a conversation of uh, well people connected with closely with uh, business university and I've heard there that well we need to know what the business is we need to know the numbers yes that's all important but if there is no passion there if you go into a business with a calculator instead of with your heart it's not going to work anyway because you if you it. were just checking your bank account, you could easily stay coaching. Absolutely. But your need was different. Absolutely. And I think that's what I meant with when you're coming from that place, it's pretty hard to say no. And and I constantly work on on coming from my heart. Like that's that's it, Michael. That's exactly it. Mm -hmm. And the heart is the heart is strong it's it's uh it's fearless and it's non-judgmental so i keep putting that as the leader and i get the reflection back from the world and the more that i do the more that i that i i get the the love back and so it's to me it just um it's very magical really in a way I know it sounds silly, but it's very magical what coming from this space can do. It can transform. That's exactly the word. Well, I call it fulfillment. Mm. That's mm. Basically, basically what it is. And in fulfillment is, uh, well, like you have it. There is mm. no time for, well, resting, relaxing. There is, there is no time for getting bored if you want to be fulfilled yes oh i love that it's keep on changing but we need to know that we're going the right direction and, and it's not just the change and we're not running in a circle but that it's progress i love that i love that there was a, a moment uh, when i was coaching mm -hmm. And, you know, you have to take care of, like, the accounting of the business. And that involves, like, even, you know, like, the driving, how much you're driving, this and that. And I was just, like, looking at my life. And it was, like, okay. I looked at my year. And it was the same activities, the same drive, the same, the same, the same, the same, the same. And I was, like, yes. whoa. I said, whoa. Something is wrong here. <laughs> my life is just a circle. And I'm not moving anywhere from my heart. Like, yes, I enjoyed it, but it was becoming stagnant and I and it was dying. There was no life anymore. Mm. And so even though I love figure skating and I still love teaching, I, any chance I get, I can teach, you know, but it's what I needed to, like you said, I needed to be fulfilled and fulfill and and just be alive. So, yes, that's exactly it. Perfect. That's fantastic. And it's, uh, it's a true transformation because if we keep on changing thing, things, uh, it doesn't work. We just keep on trying and we don't really know what to do. And uh, well, I believe that the key to your success was as well knowing what you want. Knowing what you want. 100%. And that's really tricky because 
like I said, I had people really close to me um, many times say like, oh, well, I think you should stick to coaching. It's, you know, it's this, yeah. it's a very great career. You're going to do well in it. And I, I could have, if I didn't know what I wanted, if I didn't have it detailed, I could have very easily flopped around <laughs> by people's opinions and thoughts. Mm. But that's something that I learned from my skating as a kid. So many people laughed at me for skating. So many people like, that's not for boys. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. Like, that's ridiculous. Uh, even teachers, people at school, like adults would tell me like, what are you doing? You're never going to go anywhere. And I was really lucky that uh, I, I never, I had such a straight vision and such a passion for what I wanted mm -hmm. that I knew exactly, like you said, I knew exactly what I wanted. And it didn't matter what anyone said because I wasn't going to go off my road. And uh -huh. so there was a moment when I went into building the company last. So I had to, I had to be really clear about what my goals are in business now and as my career, no longer skating, but now business. And I had to make sure that I knew what it was I wanted. And now nobody can make me doubt what I'm doing. Because in the beginning, I was feeling very lost for the first time in my life. I felt so lost because I think I didn't know clearly what I wanted. And oh. so I said, okay, uh, maybe lost. So, oh, no, but maybe the coaching. Oh, the coaching is good. Like, I still love it. Oh, uh, and so there was so much, like, I was playing around like a oh. boat. <laughs> so, floating. Tell me this. Do you still have a moment that you just sit down and you think, Oh, it would have been so much easier if I was coaching. 100%, of course. That's why I say... You see, guys, I, you're I, going to have it too. You're going to think that way, whatever you do, however you love it, you're going to sit down and think it would have been so much easier if. <laughs> and then you're going to wake up the next day and no way, I'm going to do it. You got it that's been the, that's been years of that so let me tell you it's not it's not overnight and it's always still of course i wake up i'm like oh i think i'm going in the wrong way and then i'm like no come back and then the, i'm lucky then it comes back and it's like i'm on fire right but exactly it, it never stops it never stops and i think it's just more it gets more and more sure but there's always a little something there because I think as humans, we do seek comfort. I think it's so much, yes. it's a part of being human, I think, too. And I think that's okay, yes, too. Yes. Yeah. Yes, that's, that's what we want. We want to be comfortable. But again, when we get too comfortable, it gets boring. And we need change. We need variety in life. Yes. And, and I, I call uh, it, yeah. I call it, you start to die slowly, like a slow death, mm. you know? That's what I call it. And that that's when you see like, and I've experienced it, you know, like in that, in, in that interim of not knowing and this and that, like that's when the depression kicks in, like stuff yes. like mental health issues start to arise because, because yeah, you're not alive. You're mm. not living, right. You're not living truly. You're not truly living. Yes. And well, so... that's, that's what it is. Exactly. You see, that's why, uh, well, one of my advices, one of the, First exercises, I think, in uh, my stress management course is do something different that you don't usually do. You live in a city, go to the countryside, go to the farm and work there over the weekend. Mm. Help with cattle, with crops, with whatever. Do something completely different that you haven't done. Mm. You're working somewhere that. without people. Go to the care home for elderly people uh, do some work with uh, well children that are in foster care do something like that don't commit yourself that. to it just try it and see perspective of someone else someone different mm. see different life and you will get perspective to what you are doing mm. that's and, beautiful uh, well, I had people telling me about this and they say exactly what you just said now. I just see things 
differently and I know that that's where I want to be and I have energy to keep on working towards this. Mm. That's Although beautiful. I did have one person who changed the career because of that. Yeah, and that's fair too. Yeah, he just he just decided that he loves what I'm offering and he's going to do exactly that. He, I love he that. Just, he just tested it and yeah, he changed career. <laughs> yeah, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. And that's fair. That's fair. That's mm -hmm. great. It's about exploration, right? Like I could it have is. Yeah, it was. I, I could have um there's nothing wrong. Being a coach is amazing. It's great. But it is. It's just really getting honest about what brings you joy mm -hmm. and what and for me it was important to well, I guess I realized that what brings me joy is not just my own existence and my own happiness, but I do love to bring something to my community, my family, and other people. Exactly. So I think, well, I think that's, yeah. It's the whole sports community that you're working with now, and that's fantastic work. Uh, well, just, just before we finish, can you just say a few words about what exactly your company is doing, what exactly Lasso Safe is about, and uh, how to get in touch with you? Absolutely. So Lasso Safe is my company and we make uh, sporting environments healthy and safe for athletes and also the leaders of sport. We give them tools and ways to to help e to help our community be safer and in regards to all types of abuse, um, all types of, you know, any maltreatment that's going on in sport and we do that through our through our programs and you can find us at lassosafe.com to learn more and that's that's what we do and that's my passion and that's where my heart is right now exactly well just just to clarify i need to add well if i may sure. uh, that uh, sometimes we do something and uh, we mean well but we don't know that it's actually not the best way of achieving certain goal and we can do it better. And that's exactly what Louis is working on. Not to control and limit, to guide, to educate. And that's technically for everything. It's not just for athletes and well, it's not about protecting one group from another. It's about showing them then that they are one big family and they have common goal that's the way i see it when i first spoke to luis that's that's what i saw and i still see it that way was i right that's 100 percent correct fantastic like, how can we how can we do the most good for just for all of us you know that's exactly it exactly that's that's what it is and well, I think that's a very good message, very positive. And I think that we can finish this conversation uh, with that thought. Whatever you do, wherever your environment is and grows, yes, you are one big family. Guys, work together, help one another. That's beautiful. Okay, Luis, then thank you very much for, for being on my show today. Thank and you, uh, Michael. you're very welcome. It was a pleasure to have you here. And uh, we're well, looking forward to talking to you again. Sounds great. I look forward to it too. Thank you. Bye-bye.